Hello everyone. Now in a recent video, I took you on a physical network tour of what I've got running in the house here. And I said I'd do a logical network tour in the near future. Well, I'm gonna do that now and I'm gonna start here where the server is. So let's get this started. Okay, I'm gonna start off with the server, which is here, as I mentioned before. And I'm going to go into what I've got set up in regards to VMs and I'll combine that with the switch setup and the VLANs and how I'm actually controlling my internet connection. And I'll take it from there. I'll just see how, how far this rabbit hole goes and how in-depth I want to explain things. And um, in the future, if there's any questions on things in this video, I'll try my best to answer them at a later date. So let's talk about the server now. Okay, so here's Proxmox running my virtual machines. And you can see what I've got running here. At the moment, I've got Libra NMS, of course, which is um, the network monitoring system there. Um, a lot of these are turned off and just sort of testing and mucking around with. The other one I've got is the web server, which I'm going to redo. So in the near future, there's going to be a new uh, website. But that's running on here. Uh, Libra NMS, that's a different one. And PFSense for the uh, firewall. Okay, I've given them basically a gig each but look at this one gig one gig one gig and two for libra nms because i was nice and that's all they really need to run and that runs fine so that's what that machine out there is doing just running these vms for my firewall and router i'm running pf sense now you can see i've got a whole bunch of vlans here that are used for various different things mostly just mucking around changing stuff testing experimenting and that so here's one here just vlan 80 with a couple of rules now, if I go back to uh, Proxmox and have a look at the actual VM for it, what I've done is I've just added a network adapter as I've gone along, okay, and I've given it the tag. So whatever VLAN I want, I tag it here on Proxmox. Nothing's actually tagged within PFSense itself. As far as it's aware, they're just all separate interfaces. But when it goes through Proxmox, that's when they get their tag and go on the switch. Now, this one here, tag 2, that's what I'm using for my internet. Okay, if I jump back out here to the rack for a second, this port here is where the phone line is. So it comes in here, goes to the modem, and then this yellow one comes back out from the modem, from its ethernet side. Now that modem's purely a bridge, it's not doing any functions. So what I've got here on the switch for that port is I've got that as an access port to VLAN 2. And then when it goes to the server, which is one of these, well actually both of these, for different reasons. It goes into the server. Now this, this port on the switch has all the tagged VLANs going in. So it's tagged VLAN 2 at that point, which then goes through to the server, and then it gets um, assigned to the VM for PFSense. Okay, so in Proxmox for the PFSense VM, you can see all those adapters here. I've got um, a tagged VLAN 2 adapter here. And that just means that any tag traffic with VLAN 2 will go to that interface. And then in P in PF Sense, I don't have to have any VLANs assigned. I don't have anything assigned. It's just uh, one of the many interfaces available, which in this case is called WAN because that's my internet connection. Now on Libra NMS, which is my monitoring system, this is a uh, shot of the server here, okay? Now, what you can see is there's two interfaces going in and out here, a fair bit of traffic non-stop. So I've broken that up into the two interfaces. There's one here and one here. Now, they look very different. Firstly, this is the one that you might sort of expect to see, which is um, just one of the interfaces. You can see at this point here, there was a lot coming into it and not much coming out. A bit in there and just trickles throughout the day. Okay. The other interface is non-stop. Now, I've got, uh, what, 50... 57 meg a second coming in and I've got 170 meg a second going out now that's non-stop now what that is I'll tell you right now is the cameras the uh, security cameras that I've got around the place are feeding in that's this here and the out the same amount of that out that about 57 meg is the multicast that I'm serving them out as and the rest is the multicast from the TV servers okay so this is all non-stop traffic and I didn't want that to be on the, the same adapter as the one I do the general day-to-day -day stuff. So I've split them up. And what I've done is I've made a video VLAN 80. So that's why I've got a separate network adapter on the server. So I've got two now. One for the regular stuff, which is just untagged, you know, VLAN 1 flat sort of stuff. And the other one is VLAN 80, so I can constantly smash it like this. 
Now this is a graph of the network switch. So obviously that traffic's going through the switch, so you can see the same sort of thing here. A lot of, well, the, that's the video cameras coming in, and this is all that multicast out. And the reason I've put the server in the first two ports on that switch is simply because it would make it messy if this was halfway along the ports for the plotting, basically. So I know that's always going to have this constant amount of data, so I just put that there first, and then I've got other stuff. And I can tell you what this is right here, right now. That's um, when I've downloaded a bunch of uh, dash cam stuff and I've come home from the two dash cams. And see, that's one of them that's finished there and then the other one went to there. You see, it takes a while, but it can take as long as it wants, really. It doesn't worry me. If I show you the routing table on the server, you can see those two interfaces that I've got, okay? They're mapped to the bridge. So bridge zero and bridge one. Uh, that's my normal one, you know, standard kind of address. And this one here, that VLAN 80 for all the video stuff, as I mentioned, You'll notice that, okay, the normal gateway out is, you know, one that fits that 192.168.1 network, and that kind of makes sense. This other one here is one I've added for multicast, basically saying that any multicast, send it out on the VLAN 80 network, which is here on this device, VMBR1. Okay, so that's sending all multicast from this server out on that interface. So what do I want to do if I want to access that multicast on a different VLAN? Okay, so being on a separate VLAN, all that multicast traffic that's on VLAN 80 stays within VLAN 80, so you won't see it on VLAN 1 or VLAN 50, which is my guest network. But of course, I live on those networks, so what if I want to watch some of that video? Well, what I've got set up on the switch is um, PIM, Protocol Independent Multicast, okay? So that enables routing of the multicast between VLANs. So I've set it up so it listens, and if I want to join a multicast group on VLAN 1 or VLAN 50, um, it'll, it'll send that across from VLAN 80 and I'll be able to watch it. So that's how I get around that. It's all on VLAN 80 so it doesn't swamp the interface that I normally use and it doesn't kill my VLAN 1. But if I do want to watch one of the streams, then I just access that multicast group and it sends it across. Now you've got to be careful with multicast. If you don't have a switch that can handle it, you'll just flood it throughout your network and you'll cripple it quickly. So I've also got IGMP snooping enabled on the switch. So that way only the client's that want that multicast group will receive the, the traffic. So I've got that on the switch, but I've also got it on the wireless controller. And on the wireless controller, the other thing I do is convert that multicast to unicast in the air for the wireless clients, because otherwise the multicast would be going at a low bit rate, you know, to enable everyone to get it, when really there's only this client or maybe a couple that want it. So it's more efficient to send it as unicast. I've done a video on that in the past, and. I may visit it again if um, people are unsure what I mean. But basically, IGMP snooping on the switch, on the controller, and also multicast to unicast conversion in the air from the APs to the client. Going back to the firewall for a minute, the firewall's great, first, you know, firewalling between VLANs and subnets and that, but I had a situation involving the car where I could not, I can't ping the car, it doesn't respond to ping, so I have to use ARP ping. Now, ARP ping is a layer two protocol, so I had to have it on the same um, broadcast domain, the same VLAN for that to work. But I didn't want to put the car on my home VLAN because it's a device that I don't control, okay? I don't want Tesla to be able to, or the car to be able to see anything on my network. But I wanted to be able to ARP ping it. So what I did was instead of using the um, firewall on, the, on PFSense, which I use for a guest VLAN, which is quite um, configured nicely, I've done the firewall on the controller, the wireless controller. By doing that, by putting the firewall on the actual controller, it can decide what each wireless client's allowed to do. So I've just set it up so the Tesla can join my, um, my VLAN, so it's on my VLAN, my subnet, so now I can ARP ping it, but I've set up the rules so the Tesla can't actually do anything on that subnet. All it can do is go out to the net to go to Tesla. So that way, that, that's how you do it with this IoT sort of setup that everyone's doing. They want a device on your network, that's great, but just you've got to have some way of keeping it separate to your home network or you've got a massive security vulnerability right there because you don't really know what that device is doing. I mean, I don't know what that car's doing right now on the network. Tesla could be doing anything, I don't know. But it's on its own little um, roll there, so it doesn't worry me. The other type of traffic I've got going around the network here is TFTP and HTTP for the um, devices that boot from the Pixie server off the network. Okay, but that's only during their boot up. 
Other than that, it's a very quiet network actually. Uh, you saw on the, when I showed the two interfaces on uh, the server there, the one, the one for video, VLAN 80, that's, that's smashing it constantly. But the other one, there really isn't much about it. Okay, so I don't actually do much network intensive stuff here often. Sometimes I do. When I do, the network's ready for it. But other than that, the main things are I've got Proxmox running the VMs and the main one being PFSense and uh, LibreNMS. Um, what I've got there is a couple of VLANs on the switch. I've got my home VLAN, which is um, just, you know, flat untagged VLAN 1, like most people would have. Uh, I've got a guest VLAN. I've got the video VLAN. I've got a VLAN for the internet, as I showed. And the main reason for that is I didn't need an extra physical uh, network adapter on a server for PFSense. I could just assign it one of the VLAN tags and say, this one goes to the modem, and that's taken care of. Um, other things were SNMP. Okay, the devices are running SNMP for the monitoring. And the ones that can't have SNMP, like the car or the dash cams or something, I just monitor them with pings, so I can do that. Um, in addition to that, there's IGMP snooping to see who wants to join a multicast group. There's also PIM routing, so I can send that multicast traffic across VLANs for the guest VLAN and stuff like that. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, the wireless side, of course, also has IGMP snooping and multicast to unicast, so it goes quicker through the air. And that's about it. So it's not that exciting, or maybe it is, but if you've got any questions about any aspect of that, let me know and I'll, I'll try to explain further the reason behind it. So there's a logical tour. See ya.